Good evening, Sheep. Sorry, subject. We trust that you've had time today to partake in the traditions of Christmas, the gluttony, the binge drinking, bongs and backyard cricket, false affection for the relatives you hardly know, false enthusiasm for presents that you would never have bought with your own money. A fight with your parents about something that's so deeply repressed in your childhood memories you can't remember what it's about. Neither of you can. But you know that you hate them. You hate them. You hate them. (laughs) Another drink. Another bomb. Uh, Though perhaps later. Furtive sex with a person you later discover is actually a close niece or nephew. Another three drinks. Then the depressing realisation that you've paid for this. Your credit card is exhausted and so are you. By now your guests have departed. You stumbled back inside ignoring the cyclonic hell that is your backyard and the rest of your house. The rest of your life. You slump on the couch, pour an even larger drink. To wash down another year of complete misery, you turn on the TV, you realise that, like every other year before, all 40 channels are full of shit. As I say, you pay for this. And so here we are. Cheers. As your Tsar, I've had a challenging year in 2008. And I suppose you have too, but in a simpler, proletariat kind of way. The global economy has collapsed. Apparently, you shouldn't lend money to people who can't afford to pay it back. Apparently, credit default swaps are really just a kind of expensive game of musical chairs but the music stopped the signs of global warming have become obvious and all of those predictions the arctic ice packs melting the most rapid variation in climate of floods of hurricanes of fire of drought they've all happened just as was predicted three decades ago. The pointless wars over oil continue. We respond not by decreasing oil production, but by sinking billions of dollars into last century's transport system. But let's not forget the true meaning of Christmas. Let's remember a young man maybe around 30 years old. A man of Middle Eastern appearance, we'd call him today. He dedicated his life to helping people, to healing the sick. Though a humble man, he was mercilessly attacked. He was accused of the most heinous crimes. Accused of horrific crimes. A pawn in the vicious game played out by a militaristic empire. I refer, of course, to Dr. Muhammad Hanif. Dr. Hanif was the chosen scapegoat of a government led by that miserable toad, John Winston Howard, the man of steel. Supported by his evil Minister for Immigration, Kevin Andrews. A year ago, we celebrated the end of Howard's depressing anti-human regime. We hoped that Chairman Kevin Rudd's iced Vogo revolution would change everything.
But only last week, the inquiry into the whole Hanif debacle said that there had been mistakes at the highest level of government of the Australian Federal Police. Nevertheless, the Rudd government said it still has full confidence in its police commissioner, Mick Kilty, a man who two years ago actually suggested forcibly reprogramming people's political beliefs. Need I point out that that is the most fundamental breach of people's human rights. Meanwhile, Chairman Rudd has failed to address the fact that Australia is the largest per capita consumer of carbon fuels more than any other nation on the entire planet. And his minister, his minister for being a complete prick, Stephen Conroy, is trying to implement the most comprehensive censorship of the internet of any Western democracy. Fuck this! Fuck this! Fuck this! Some famous historian once said that it always takes a few years for the world to notice how things were changed. Oh, or was it that... Was it that tan young apprentice plumber that I had the other year? What was his name? Anyway. Anyway. Whoever it was, with hindsight, we can see that the United States became the world's global leader at the end of World War I. But it wasn't until the end of the Second World War that everyone became aware of that. Similarly, the industrial age is over. And with it, the great industrial empire of the United States of America and the corrupt, secretive military industrial complex of the neocons. Dick Cheney has been indicted. They've even voted in a black fella for president. But look, before we get carried away with the audacity and hope of President Obama's new regime, consider the words of Crikey's Canberra correspondent, Bernard Keane. Politics is more or less based around people of high principles and goodwill, discovering that the obtaining and exercising of power involves doing bad things, distasteful things, immoral things. It involves unpleasant trade-offs and not just the famous half-loaves of compromise, but the stale, mouldy crusts. And it's all the more that way because it's symbiotic part of it. It's Siamese twin. The media dislikes complexity and nuance in favour of the same simple narratives repeated with an ever-changing cast of characters but the same plots and the same moral lessons over and over again. Yet all this is changing and the players are afraid. The newly hyper-connected world means that politics and the media is changing radically. Witness the reporting on the Mumbai terrorist attacks. Witness the reporting on Thailand's people for a not-quite-democracy. Witness the speed at which resistance to Senator Conroy's rabbit-proof firewall is organising itself. Ah. The 21st century has finally begun, and in the year 2009, we will see it unfold. Cheers. Looking more locally, let us consider the achievements of the New South Wales State Government. Even more locally, I'm pleased to see that in my village of Enmore in Sydney, next to Newtown, it's full of children. While it's easy to complain about the pushers, what Americans would call strollers, which are bigger than Belgium, 
there is a joy in seeing the next generation coming into being. And not in that disturbed, we must protect the children kind of way, which imagines children are threatened by pretty much everything on the planet, but in that wondrous, joyous, happy way that I know every parent watching this tonight understands. Children are our future. They're growing up in a world where they're always connected to the global grid, where they know themselves whether some person they're talking to is one of their peers or some creep. And it's only ignorant politicians with their own outdated agendas, with their own pervasive ignorance of information technology, who don't understand. Well, fuck them. Fuck the lot of them. Cheers. Finally, finally, let us remember the words of that great poem. I'm in touch with the ground. I'm on the hunt. I'm after you. Sent in a sound. I'm lost. And I'm found. Strut on a line. It's discord and rhyme. I howl and I whine. I'm after you. Mouth is alive, all running inside, and I'm hungry like the wolf. Good night, Merry Christmas, and have a happy new year. You may now kiss my ring.